All right, so there's six egg whites. Ooh, don't want to get the shell in there. Ah, got a shell. All right, there's a little bit of egg white right there. Got shell in there too. Mm. Okay, no shells in your cake. Konnichiwa, Pat Tokuyama here at All Day I Eat Like a Shark, where I share my Japanese cooking videos once a week showing you guys how to make Japanese food. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing for more videos like this one. Today what we're going to be doing is making chiffon keiki. Chiffon keiki is a Japanese style cake, or it's a variation of a Western cake, but Japanese style. And uh, we're going to be making it with sencha, which is Japanese green tea. So I have all of my ingredients here ready to go, and it's not too much. Looks like there's a lot of stuff on the counter, and you're right, there is. So uh, first thing that we're going to use is some hakurikiko, which is cake flour, essentially Japanese flour. I have about a cup here along with two tablespoons. I have here some sencha. This is from Ikkyu, based out of Fukuoka in Japan, and they graciously are partnering with me to bring this video to you. So we're using their tea today. This is gonna be about 20 grams worth. So this is what I have right here. And we're also gonna be using about a quarter cup of sugar, six eggs, about 60 ml of vegetable oil, and about a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of sugar, white sugar. What we're gonna do first is we need to separate the egg yolks from the eggs, or egg whites, and that's gonna give us our meringue base. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the egg yolks in here. We're gonna mix it with all the sugar. This is gonna be a quarter cup of sugar. Like I mentioned, let's get that going. This green tea, we're actually gonna process in my spice grinder here so that it's gonna be smaller pieces. If you don't really mind the large chunks, there are some decent sized leaves in here, but most of it is cut up, but I don't really like big chunks of leaves in my uh, cake. So we're gonna process it a little bit. But yeah, let me go ahead and do these eggs first. So egg whites go in here, egg yolks go in here. And the way that I separate these is I use the shell to separate the egg yolk from the egg white. And you wanna use cold eggs if you can because that'll help to give you a better meringue. So when you're trying to beat the egg whites with a little bit of sugar, the cold temperature helps to uh, give it a little bit more structure. So that's one tip if you're trying to make meringue. So another tip is not to use oil. So usually when you make a cake, you want to oil your cake pan, right? So it doesn't stick. But because we're gonna be inverting our chiffon cake upside down to stretch it, if we oil it, it's just gonna fall right out when we, when we invert it. So don't wanna do that. Make sure that you just leave it the way it is. So now we're done with the eggs. Next thing that I'm gonna do, you can get the uh, Meringue started, so we're gonna put it in just a little bit of sugar, maybe a couple teaspoons. Get this going at a high speed. Actually, because that's gonna be really noisy and I'm not gonna be able to talk, or I will be able to talk, but you're not gonna be able to hear me. We're gonna just go ahead and really um, quickly process the tea leaves here. I'm just putting them in my spice grinder. All right, so that should be good. And then we're gonna sift our flour. It's very important that you sift your flour. If you have a flour sifter, great. I just use my wire mesh strainer here. It works just as well. And this helps to make sure all of the flour has a relatively even space distributed between it. You can also do the same with the tea. If you don't do this, you might get some clumps, which you wanna avoid. The most important part of this cake, because we're not using any kind of baking powder, baking soda, any kind of a leavening agent, is that we get the meringue done the right way. Okay, so that looks good. Drop in those residual tea leaves. Now I'll set this aside. And now I'm going to combine all of the sugar with the egg yolks, which I already have in here. We're gonna process it, or we're gonna whisk it with my immersion blender. And as soon as it turns nice and white, we'll add in some water here. So this is about a third of a cup of water. And then the oil. And then we're gonna combine this mixture with the egg whites along with the flour and we're gonna fold it in using a spatula so I'll go ahead and get this started because it's gonna be noisy so I won't be talking I'm gonna zip my mouth for a bit and you can just watch it go stand mixers are the best if you don't have one and you bake often highly recommend that you get one it's like having a assistant that's what my mom said and it's true I'm just gonna pause this for a sec. It looks like it's just about done. Stiff peaks here, you can see when you take out the whisk, it's gonna hold its shape. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of the sugar and then we're gonna finish doing this and we'll just about be done, so. So you notice I kept whisking this until it turned a nice pastel yellow. It was a very bright gold yellow, but now it's more of a pastel, which is what we want because we want it to have a lot of air in it. And that's what's changing the color. So our meringue is done. And now we're just gonna add in the oil and the water. And then the last thing is that we're gonna fold the flour and the matcha, or not the matcha, the tea with the meringue. And then we're gonna pour it into our little chiffon pan, our cake pan. All right, 
So our meringue is done. It's right here. We're gonna be folding everything together. It's very stiff. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in here. I'm gonna use the whisk to blend everything together. And I have my oven heated at 340, 340 degrees. We're gonna bake everything for about 30 minutes, roughly. And that's the point where we'll take it out and then invert it. So as soon as this is done, we're gonna go ahead and fold everything together. Splattered a little bit right there. This is a beautiful cake, by the way. It smells amazing right now. If you've ever tried olive oil cake and you like olive oil cake, you might want to try olive oil in this cake. Maybe the second time that you make it. That way you know what it tastes like without the olive oil flavor and then you know what it tastes like with it. I think both of them are pretty good. Okay, so just about done. Got my pan here, that out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and fold. So we're gonna fold in here and then fold into the cake pan. So try to get as much of this incorporated and mix. You don't wanna crush it because you wanna keep the little air bubbles that's in the meringue. It's gonna give the cake its loft, its fluffiness. So just try to fold it as evenly as you can. A little bit of a different procedure than a regular cake. You can't just throw everything and mix it all together like you do with the regular cake. This one you gotta be a little bit more delicate, but the resulting texture and fluffiness is pretty incomparable, if you ask me. And this makes a really big cake, by the way. If you have a Japanese size or a small pan, then you don't need to make this entire batch. You could probably half it, but I enjoy this cake, and so that's why we're making the full amount today. And plus, if I did half amount, it'd be pretty short. So got to do the full amount for this pan. And if you end up with streaks, that could be because you didn't incorporate all of the meringue into the uh, cake flour batter. So you want to make sure that you do it thoroughly. And then the last thing that you're going to do, once you add it into the cake pan, you can use a chopstick or a skewer to ensure that it's evenly distributed. You want to use like a, a wooden utensil. I don't know if you'd want to use a metal skewer. Otherwise you might scratch the bottom of your pan and that'll make sure that the uh, bottom comes out even. So just a little bit more and then we'll be done. And to serve this, all you need is a little bit of whipped cream, maybe some azuki, anko, which is a little smushed sweet red bean. You can even eat this with ice cream. So I'm just gonna add this in here. Looks like there's a little few white patches, but if you see them, just break them up. It's no big deal. All right, so I think we're just about done. The last thing I'm gonna do is just take a skewer or chopstick and uh, make sure that it's evenly distributed. And then we'll put it in the oven. All right, so that should give us a nice flat top. So our hard work is done. We're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven at 340 for 30 minutes and it's gonna be it. So go ahead and put this in, in the middle rack. So here we go. See you in 30 minutes. Okay guys, so it's been about 30 minutes and my chiffon cake is done. We're gonna go ahead and take it out. So this is how it looks right now. We're gonna go ahead and invert it and then we'll let it cool before we take it out. So the inversion helps us stretch it out. Gotta be careful. All right, once this is cooled, we're gonna go ahead and go around the edges so that it comes out nicely and it'll be ready to eat. So. Okay guys, so my cake has cooled quite a bit. It's not so hot anymore. And what we're gonna be doing, now that it's been stretched out vertically, we're gonna go ahead and put it onto the plate. And what we're gonna do is just take off the uh, side piece here. I'm gonna scrape it out first. This is how it looks. And then this is actually a two piece set, so it should come out right away. And go ahead and lift this out. Can actually invert this. And actually I'm gonna go ahead and, before we do that, I'm gonna loosen up the edges on the bottom here. And then the last step will just be this center piece here. You don't want the center to get stuck, otherwise it might tear. All right, so I think that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and gently invert it. All right, try to center this. So here it is, guys, the uh, Sencha chiffon cake. I guess it's chiffon, chiffon, chiffon. I don't know how to pronounce it in, I think it's a, is it a French term or is it an American term? Anyways, this is the Sencha version of that and we are done. So now all we gotta do is cut it and serve. So hope you guys give this a chance. Not too bad, right? Pretty straightforward. It's just a little bit of a different technique compared to regular cake. The texture is light and fluffy, very airy, and the flavor, because we put Sencha in it, very delicate and tea-like. So hope you guys get a chance to try this. And like I said before, if you wanna see more videos like this one, subscribe if you haven't already and see you in my next video. China, bye-bye.